hope I don't get locked in here. All right, here he goes. Fingers pinch. Ow! Okay. Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here with Bish's RV, hanging out in Utah today, taking a look at a Northwood Nash. This is the 23D, which I think means like 23 foot box, D probably means like dinette slide, and it's, what is it, 5,675 pounds as we see it here today with their off the grid package, which is adding a little equipment, a little bit of weight, a little bit of cost, but a lot of fun and function to this little sucker right here. Um, this is one of the few of these that, uh, because the thing with Northwoods, they are not made for wimpy trucks in mind by any stretch of the imagination. This is one of the few I've seen that I think um, a, a decent tow package half ton would actually handle. But you got to remember, it says 5,600 pounds. These things have a very respectable cargo capacity um, because somebody might camp with this with like water in the tanks and whatnot. And they want to make sure that you're not going to overload the axles. But you're also not going to really have to worry about like overloading the chassis on one of these because one of the cool things about Northwood is they custom build in-house their own chassis, their own roof trusses. They build more internally than externally, which, which costs more. It's cheaper to pay somebody else to build stuff crazy enough when they specialize in only that. But as a result, um, they have more accountability, more control over the build and the processes, and when something needs fixed, they can get it fixed. Uh, the off-grid package we're looking at here today increases the propane capacity. Uh, we change out the tires. Um, it expands the solar significantly from the base battery tender only to something that frankly should be able to run the lights of the fans pretty much indefinitely, especially considering you don't have a choice of refrigerator with these. They come with a two-way fridge, and if you don't like it, I would recommend maybe looking at a different brand of camper. <laughs> uh, there's also some nice things like the mattress in this is not terrible. It is a short queen, however, and pointing out the good with the bad, that is always what you're going to get from us here uh, at Bish's RV. So make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't, and let me know what you think about these as we go through. I've done a couple now. I may start recording some other things while I'm here and let you tell me on my next trip back, or is this a brand that I should jump back more into? You let me know. And I think there's a very, like, down-home, rustic-ish kind of sort of vibe that goes into these things right here. This is not a flashy, in-your-face uh, brand. This is a we-are-going-to-build-it rock-solid kind of brand. It's a, it's a very just calm, down-to-earth sort of thing right here. Um, interesting little factoid. Uh, the name Nash, I, I believe, now I'm saying factoid, but then I'm saying I believe, I think that is named after Ron Nash, who I think is one of the founders of Northwood, and, ooh, I'm testing my memory, I, didn't he have something to do with Fleetwood RV, which is why you see, like, the little duck logo on here, I think that's kind of a callback to the old Fleetwood Mallard days, um, just to sort of give you an idea, like, I've been saying how I get, like, classic Fleetwood feels from this. That would actually make a lot of sense. I need to look into the history and the ownership of Northwood, although you probably don't care about all that right now. Anyway, this is definitely not a camper for watching TV, because that's your entertainment center right there. To say that it's an afterthought, I think, is generous. This is not a camper for going to a campground and sitting down and watching TV all day. If you're absolutely stuck in the RV all day, if you want to watch a little something at night, you could. Uh, you know, the uh, it, what is interesting is they do at least run HDMI plugs uh, for us. Well, one, at least. Up top here, um, it's interesting. You've got the... Uh, so this is if you want to add a 12 volt TV, but it just kind of comes with USB plugs and then household, uh, plug up top there. We will come back and open like all the storage up in a minute. First, I just kind of want to give you like a 360 pan of this thing. And notice over here in the kitchen, the little like radius work they do on their cabinets and the classic like peninsula style overhead cabinet above the peninsula style kitchen countertop right here. Um, it's just, like I said, there's some almost throwback features and functions on this. Sometimes, like you hear people say, they don't build them like they used to. Yeah, they do. Northwood does. Northwood builds them very much like they used to, if not more heavy duty. Anyway, don't worry about the fact that the solar battery, uh, or charge controller is blinking. It's because it doesn't have a battery on it. But I like that all of our lights are right here, including travel trailer prepped for an onboard generator is is such a rare commodity uh really in the history of camping but especially now see that little white remote control right there 
What that is for is for the uh, the big like fantastic fan right there above the bed. Now what's cool about that, since that's a remote control, you could keep that remote control in the headboard slots over that bed. And uh, I mean, you know, you wouldn't even have to get up at night. You wouldn't even have to put on pants if you want to turn the fan on. Now that, now that we've kind of seen everything, let's take a look at the storage. And in case you're wondering how big the storage is under the bed, it's nerd sized. And let me tell you, it takes a big compartment to fit my fat nugget down in there. <laughs> good storage all around the bed, good storage under the bed. You see the split privacy curtains in case you're putting on a little shadow puppet theater. Uh, nice for some privacy if you happen to be folding laundry aggressively or however you camp. I don't know. By the way, um, again, I, I like to point things out. This is a camp queen. This is a 60 by 74 short queen. If you put a longer bed in, I don't know if it could close and clear the slide. Now, I think the solution to that, you get a six inch spacer block and put it in the headboard. Where that's a little interesting, though, is you're going to need a pretty thick one because they put a real mattress in these things. Oh, they shave down and radius the corners of those so it doesn't rip up your legs. Well, that's nice of them. By the way, you look at this, and at a glance, you're like, there's no hanging storage in this. this that's absolutely stupid. Those shelves in the side wardrobe closets are uh, removable. So if you want hanging storage, it's there. If you don't, don't worry about it, you know. Looking up top here, taking a look at all the cabinet space. This is all pocket-screwed cabinetry. This is the same style of cabinetry that you're going to find in, like, a Montana High Country, um, a Jayco North Point, and you're finding it down here in a uh, travel trailer where it's an all-wood core with no particle board. It does have a sticker wrap, but it's all pocket-screwed. Uh, classic uh, above-mounted stainless sink is one of those kind of like, huh, really, that's what you went with. That's a little interesting. Get this big door out of the way right there and again there's things i like about this there's things i don't it is not the flashiest fanciest thing it is just everything you see is just built in thick like uh, it's just too legit to quit <laughs> what was mc hammer's real name wasn't it stanley something or other did you notice by the way stovetop side splash thank you it's one of my favorite features on these northwoods they do it every single time that is a gas electric two-way fridge they do not offer anything else. So kind of keep that in mind right there. And crap. I set the dyna uh, up in sleeper mode. I meant to pull those drawers out so you could see the storage, but it's probably good that I didn't because I would have tripped and fallen over those things and hurt myself. But remember, I was talking about thickness. Look at the dinette cushions, you know? And this is Nash. This is the simplest, most basic thing Northwood makes. It is... In its in in the Northwood base form, a heavier built thing than you find in almost the rest of the industry, frankly, guys. And and by the way, um, the right hand side of the dinette over here. Let me. I'm gonna slowly work you around the corner so you can see it. There is a household outlet down in there. That's just one of those things uh, I like to be able to showcase for people. So, um, like, what would you use that for? Like, phone chargers kind of come to mind to me, but I don't know. It, it just, I'm just kind of wondering, like, people like power outlets around dinettes, but what do you use them for? I'm kind of curious. I think we're off to the bathroom, folks. You know, uh, one too many barley pops will get you there, but there you go. Uh, let's start with space around this porcelain foot flush toilet. It's not bad. It's a little tight on the left arm side. So, unfortunately, uh, our left-handed brothers and sisters are discriminated against once again. Sealed edge thermal foil counters all the way through. Nice rectangular shower. And with the ceiling vault, some very respectable headroom in there. And just like we saw uh, above the bed up here, you've got one of those bigger vent fans to really do some Taco Tuesday airflow kind of work in here. Now, if you look above... Once again, this gives me some Fleetwood feels. This is stuff they used to do. They'd have that big open pocket up top for like your toiletries and whatnot. And then next to the uh, toilet, they would have just a huge chunk of storage. I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> okay. Ooh, made it. Anyway, like I was saying, big chunks of storage over here. Um, one of the things you might notice, not a lot of shelving in there because that's another closet. What's interesting is this little camper has more closet space than a lot of fifth wheels I've seen. 
That big slide out in this one, though, when you retract it, it really does boss its way into this room. And especially considering they went with a full true U dinette right here, which again gives us that guest sleeping space if desired, which I don't mind with those nice thick cushions. It's actually pretty plush. But that table comes right up to this kitchen counter pretty darn close. Now, if you pop the table out or if you got skinny chicken legs like mine, you can slide your way right through there just like I did. I mean, there's, there's no Mr. Fantastic movie magic going on here. Mr. Fantastic, for those not indoctrinated into the nerd way of things, that is the rubber dude from the Fantastic Four. <laughs> so if you need to make a travel stop, if you need to get in here, you need to get to the bathroom, you need to get to the shower or something like that, you know, depending on what you've been doing, if you need to make an overnight stop, you just got to wash the road off you. This is a camper that can pass the Cracker Barrel test, just gets a little tight in that one spot. I want to start this one down here under the bed because it has something that not every Nash has, a full true passer with those big, tall, and wide, like square-shaped baggage doors on both sides of the RV. But speaking of baggage compartments, take a look at what is on the face of the slide right there as I trip over a street curb behind me and just about go uh, backside over tea kettle. So under the back of the u dinette, you can access the storage there, which is cool. Now next to that baggage door with those neat magnet holdbacks up front anyway, you see a little black dot. That is a Zamp solar prep plug for a portable panel, which is a lot of alliteration for me to spit out. And my uh, English teacher from school would have been very proud of me just now. Um, so this always has, we're gonna talk more about solar on the roof, but this always has a simple battery uh, solar tender. With the off the grid package that we're looking at right here, which is obvious to see, well, does it have it? Does it not have it? You see those giant propane tanks? You see on the nose where it says off the grid. Well, it's a pretty good indication that, yeah, this one was built with that optional package. No uh, research required, mind you. Um, anyway, the off the grid package expands the solar, but you always have that portable prep plug right there. The off the grid package does a lot on the front of this RV though. We upgrade up to 40 pound propane tanks like an Arctic Fox fifth wheel. And then you see this elevated tray here. Normally, I would tell you that's going to be cool for something like a generator mount. But what you're going to see is that every single Nash actually is already prepped for an onboard generator. And actually from the factory, you can get a, I believe it's a 3600 watt generator, which would be more than capable of running this RV in its entirety. Um, the off the grid package also protects the awning a little bit better. I'm a little far away, but if you see one of these up close, there's a really heavy black like squeeze wrap on that thing. It's a reflective cover so that when the awning is uh, rolled away like it is right now, the sun that is on the RV right now is not eating it away. Um, down here, this is another cool thing with the off the grid package. Uh, you get the, the neat knobby tires, which just look really cool. But you see how you've also got that uh, shock uh, dampener on that suspension down there, taking a lot of the herky jerkiness out of towing. Or if you're going to go off the beaten path, if you're not just park camping, which if you're looking at the off the grid package, you're probably doing a measure of that. Uh, you're good there. Now, uh, a rig like this, you know, without an articulating hitch, I'm not going to call it like an off-road camper or something like that. It's a little bit big for that kind of use. But um, again, for, for some light trails that you're, you're not going to regret the extra lift off the ground you get. And did you see how big the water heater door is there? I'm a little far away from it now to be drawing attention to it. But the fact is, these are on a larger, like, 10-gallon uh, vessel water heater. Like a lot of big fifth wheels in the marketplace today. That is cool. Oh, we got a, we got a new, uh, looks like Grey Wolf rolling in right here. That's how it happens, folks. Gas grill quick connect down here. And I like where they put it. They put it, um, you, you see that little triangle, uh, that metal extrusion right there that pops down? That is there so that if you're going up something with a steep incline, it'll scuff that so it doesn't rip your uh, stabilizer off. They kind of protect and hide the propane connection in there. That's frankly pretty smart. Uh, 300 pound accessory hitch on the back. That actually, no, I think that might be 500 pound. I, I have to double check. Um, I know on their bigger fifth wheels, their Arctic Fox uh, fifth wheels, they actually do have a 500 pound rating on that. And the reason being, is because again, they build their own chassis. They, they build it thicker and stronger 
so they can come up with a uh, you know a heavier rating that most of the marketplace just doesn't have like that ladder it is a bigger thicker heavier duty ladder zero flex on that thing when you climb around it it is very confidence inspiring not to mention it feels very stable and sturdy on the roof here personally i am not a big fan of the knuckle buster style uh power cord here and i think some of my friends in texas would say what do you mean the snake house because that's a nice warm box that a snake would love to hang out in in there no thank you um and that's our generator prep spot right there. Again, all Nashes are prepped for generator, and then you have a uh, option to get one applied from the factory, or you could give us a call, and uh, we could put one on there for you too. But did you notice there's a light bar? Just like you saw on the tongue, like you see on the back here, so you can actually see what you're doing on your site at night. Because this is a camper that you might park with nobody else around. So it's nice to be able to, to flood some light all around your campsite that normally in a park, I don't think the neighbors would appreciate. Well, while I'm up here getting blinded by the light, revved up like a deuce and other runner in the night, I figured it'd be a good time to talk about solar. So you see the little panel. That is a 45 watt simple battery tender when it's in storage, nothing major right there. But next to it is a 175 watt ZAMP panel that uh, ties into the whole thing and they work together to expand your capacity. Plus, you always have that portable plug uh, down at ground level. So if you're parked in the shade, you can chase the sun with that. That extra panel there, that bigger panel, is part of the off-the-grid package. So keep that in mind. And if that's not enough, folks, we can build you just about any solar package your wallet can support. <laughs> and I kind of, I'm thinking about this. If you really wanted to, I bet it wouldn't be very hard without needing a lot of extra wiring to pop that 45-watt panel off and add a second 175 panel. I don't think you'd even need to change out the charge control. I got to do some checking on that before you take that for face value. One other thing I want to show you up here is if you want to add a uh, vent cover over your big power vent fan up here, you see how it's already got the ears that stick up? You don't have to screw anything into the factory construction, which means you don't have to screw up your factory warranty. Now remember, what we're looking at here today is just one example of this trailer. It's not to say that every 23D has the, the different tires and the, the, the off-grid package and all that. Although, looking at it, I don't know that I would want one without those things. I really like them, but that's my two cents. What do you see on this? Do you think it's worth the extra weight, the extra money, as compared to some more industry um conventional things like a similar floor plan in the past would have been a freedom express 231 although they don't make that anymore somewhat in the the wheelhouse in terms of floor plan of a 2513 rockwood um you know there's there's some other things with similar floor plans there's definitely a difference in the build though you know um and there is i think certainly a get what you pay for factor here but do you need all that do you want all that um, are, are, do you plan on owning an RV long enough that it even matters? Do you need the extra bulky construction? Let me know what you think about that. So until then, take care, stay safe, have fun. Remember to subscribe, everyone.